welcome to Dairy Wilson and I am very much glad to be here to introduce myself. From today onwards, I will be reading all your anatomy lectures. And I wish you all the very best for all the posts and we will keep in touch any doubts related to subject and any uh, internet issues during online sessions or uh, any problems you find out. Don't hesitate and do let us know. And also like uh, try to be on time to the classes so that uh, you may not miss uh, any particular topic or uh, information also. And also I would like to thank the institution for uh, giving me another opportunity to deliver the anatomy lectures. So with these few words, uh, nothing much myself to introduce you. Hope you will be seeing me all through the day. So you will be knowing then and there who am I and who we are. So only thing is like uh, good discipline and good behavior, good respects and with good knowledge and good subject. And I pray to God that God will bless you all abundantly. And with these few words, we will try to start our today's anatomy lectures. Anatomy is the key foundation for the whole art of medicine. So welcome to the medical institutions, the respect to the field. And anatomy is the one of the key subject and also the first subject. And uh, I plead everyone to read anatomy in such a way that that is going to be our uh, medical curriculum. So today I would like to bring in the introduction to anatomy. So what will I learn in uh, introduction to anatomy? Mainly in introduction to anatomy, first of all we should know by school age you might have known that what are all the parts of the body and what are the systems of the body. So in this medical institution what we will be doing on is like uh, we will try to deal uh, by schedules uh, system by system system based anatomy we will be learning on. So now anatomy we will divide into two main parts. One is the general anatomy and then we will move with the systematic anatomy. And uh, in the second phase what we will be doing is like we will try to bring into you two definitions. The one which you see with your eye is macroscopic and the one which you don't see with your naked eye so that we need to be assisted by an instrument called as a microscope. So through the microscope we will be studying the different types of what you observe by microscopically the same thing you identify microscopically. So as simple as that I try to bring into you the heart. You can able to identify the heart with your own naked eye. So studying the parts of the heart externally and visually we classify them under the macroscopic anatomy. Same thing, the same heart which has its own muscle fibers and certain other things which needed to be found out which you cannot identify by the visual eye. For that one we will take a microscope, we will take the different cut sections of the heart and some staining procedures will be there and then we will put it onto the glass slide to cause you and we will try to identify the same substance of the heart under the microscope. So when you identify under the microscope, some other specified features you are going to study. So uh, anatomy is of two major parts which we are going to divide, that is macroscopic anatomy and microscopic anatomy. So after dealing with these uh, two macroscopic and microscopics, so now we divide now anatomy. So our whole uh, organization of the body into two different uh, regions as I said previously like general means like I would like to bring them into regional parts a regional anatomy so whole body I will put it into different regions likewise head and neck so this part I am going to keep it as one region as head and neck region and these when you open up the skull the brain part. So inside you identify brain and spinal cord. So we would like to keep it as another region as brain. So like we study under neuroanatomy. And the coming next region will be the thorax. So what is thorax? So after now here we are done with the neck level. From neck level to the almost initiation of the abdominal level. 
So this part of the area, I am going to call them as the thoracic region. So in the thoracic region, as basically we already know, in the junction heart is there, on either side you had lungs are going to be associated. And uh, at this level, this is the thorax, and the below region is called as the abdomen. So thorax and the abdomen are separated by a very important respiratory muscle. The important respiratory muscle is the diaphragm. So, inhalation, exhalation. When you do, there is a muscle is going to be located. So, that muscle, when we dissect the body, we can able to identify like a wall, which differentiates to the upper floor to the lower floor like. So, there the muscle is going to be located. So, now this is the thoracic region and the below region is called as an abdomen region. And then where I am going to keep my two hands, so this is the hip region. So now this is our abdomen. So at the hip level below region, all the genital organs, and uh, especially for the females, we have uterus. Uh, means like in the pelvic region. So means to recall the words back, head and neck. Inside we have the brain as you run at it. This is the thoracic region. This is the abdominal region. This is the pelvic region. So now what is left over? The head is the hands. So all of the limbs of my right side and left side, I call them as upper limbs. Upper limb of the right and upper limb of the left. Same like when we are left over in the final one that is the legs. So I call them from the hip to the toe level. All we will study under the lower limbs. So this is how we divide into regions. So now, up till now, we have dealt with the regional anatomy. So, like how uh, we had, uh, suppose, uh, we had in the country, we say that east, west, south, and north, we divide into regions. Same like in the body, also we have made into regions head, neck, thorax, abdomen, pelvis, upper, and lower limbs. So, now in the regions, any country will take a region like south region, east region, west. Those regions are going to have states. So, by state why we divide them. Same like in the body also, what I would like to do is like I am going to divide my regions of the body into different types of systems. So, now we are entering into the depth of the anatomy slowly into it. I hope we are all getting uh, much clear, any doubts. At the end of the session of the class, you can bring me on. So, I am here always there. Even at the 10th time or the 11th time, I am here to clear your doubts. So now we will move into the systems so one by one. So we have the first one that is called as integumentary system. It is called as integumentary system. Integumentary system is for example if I am going to take my hand. So the hand is going to be covered by what? What is this one? Skin. So on the skin we are going to have hair is going to be grown. So study of skin and hair is related particularly to the integumentary system. So just today I am just only naming the headings only. Systems by system and we start we will go in detail what is epidermis, what is dermis, what are volumes etc. All those things will be discussed during the system in detail. Just today is our duty only introducing the anatomy only. So the first system we have just done that is the integumentary system. I hope uh, you are all getting uh, understood. So now the next level uh, the second system I would like to bring into you is the skeletal system. The system is skeletal. So, what is skeletal system? So, in the skeletal system, we will try to talk about, so we are here with a framework. So, what is the framework in our body? So, when you construct a building, you know, we need some rods which should be kept to the shape of the building. Same like this, for the shape of the body, we need bones in our body. So everyone knows that my arm bone is called as humerus, my collar bone is called as clavicle. Some few bones you might be aware of it by your day to day life. So when God has created the human, so the baby was born with the 350 bones. Later on in the bone we call them as ossification. Once the ossification means the formation of full term of a bone. When the baby was small, you know the bones are very small. And when we grow in, you know, the bones will grow on. So there are some attachments and all those words will keep it under the ossification. 
So the full term formation to study again during the same term system. So I would like to bring in only one word that. So when the baby was born, we had these 350 bones and when we develop into a full term human being, so we all have 206 bones. 206 bones to be remembered. And moving on to the next system, so first one is the integument, second one is the skeletal system. So now we have a framework of uh, uh, when you are constructing a building, you know, as I told you previously, we need to have some rocks. Only by rocks you don't construct a building, right? We need some cement and all those things to be same likewise. The bones are getting associated by, they are attached by, they are embedded by muscles. So many people will move to the gym, sir, I want to make my muscle too strong, I want to make my body six pack body, seven pack body, blah, everything. Same likewise, you know, what are the muscles that are, so now I am not telling the number of muscles are there in the body, any number of muscles are there. So study of muscles and the different types of muscles, different varieties and we had a lot of classifications are there. Study related to the muscles which we study under a muscular system. Now we were uh, dealt with the uh, study of uh, skin and appendages of the head that is, can I get the answer, integumentary system. The second one we studied about the bones and related things, skeletal system. This like bones includes with the cartilages also. Third one is the muscular system related to the muscles. And now we will head into the next system that is the very important system that is the nervous system. So don't get nervous by the way. So nervous system which is located in the brain. So we have to open a strong part of the skull. Inside a beautiful brain will be there. So when you come to the you know, near classes, you can identify how the brain is there in our body and brain will ends by a tail like structure called as spinal cord. Studying about the brain, the tail and the spinal cord and related Spinal nerves and cranial nerves are there. So, the all detail about the nerve and the brain we will study under the nervous system. And then uh, we will move on to the next system. So, that is the cardiovascular system. So, what is cardiovascular? It is a combination of two terms that is cardiovascular. So, cardio is related to heart. So, studying about the detailed part of the heart. So, sometimes you might have visited the hospital and you might have seen a specialized cardiologist. So, they will deal with this specialization. So, now we are in the introductory basis only. So, studying of the detailed parts and chambers, their uh, uh, structure, their function, their conduction, everything will study under the heart. From the heart, what happens, you know, the main blood vessels will uh, emerge also. So, what are the blood vessels as you already know by uh, of past uh, studies that we have two words for the arteries and veins. Arteries will carry oxygenated blood and the veins will bring back the deoxygenated blood. So now how, how the structure, the size and everything, so like arteries are of some are larger, some are medium, some are small. So we classify those about things related to the heart and the uh, heart associated with the blood vessels that is the arteries and the when. So, we will study about the cardiovascular system in detail at that time. And then uh, moving on with the cardiovascular system is also associated with uh, the rest over filtered lymph will be brought back via through the thoracic duct. So, those all things will study as a lymph node, lymph channels, lymph capillaries. So, all those detailed curriculum structure I will try to bring into you during my detailed lymphatic system class. And then the next system we will move on with like, as you already know brain is there. Inside of brain there is one small organ but which is a dominant organ for our body that is called as a master gland or a pituitary gland. So, pituitary gland will control the all our body which initiates the secretion of different varieties of uh, hormones. Same like when you move, move into our own body, we all know kidneys. At the top of the kidney, there is another small gland will be there called as suprarenal gland or I can call them as adrenal gland. 
So what does that do to handle? Oh, lot of functions are there. For example, I divide as an initial order because this is an again an introduction class. Again, I don't want to go into deep into it. So like we have zone of glomerulosa, zone of fasciculata, zone of reticulata. Means when they carry the mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, sex corticoids, and then also the medulla will secrete the epinephrine and all of these things. Right? Why I have a comment with these words is like, for example, you don't know and you don't understand my class or you don't like me. So suddenly furious will come and say, hey, why is this tower still is taking the class? Furious is coming also. From where who is initiating us? Endocrine. Something, uh, by the way, you are walking in and out, so you like a boy or a girl. So some endocrine functions are working in our body. So love or hair redness or any particular action. So any function, for example, in the female, so we had in the neck, there is a gland will be there. You run into the hospital, they take T3, T4, T etc. So thyroid gland. Thyroid gland will dulls the uh, different types of uh, metabolism associated with calcium metabolism. So like we had a different, so like male reproductive system, testis, uh, production of sperm, female reproductive system, production of ova. So all different set of, uh, uh, what to say, endocrine organs. All those things and the functions you study during our endocrine system. Moving on with the digestive system. Very important for even immediately after the class, go and have really. So digestive system, so we start with the mouth, oral cavity, we eat the food, mouth to the, then followed by, you might already studied it, so pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small and large intestine, rectum and animal canal, associated by some glands are there, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen, a lot will come in action. So, uh, aiding of food and its digestion and uh, all the related parts related to the digestive pathways we are going to study under the digestive system. And also the next system, what we have to do, you know, so we have to grab a bit, you know, first of all we have to give, right? So, we need to breathe in air. So, means we are going to breathe air by our nostrils which enter through the trachea through the lungs. So means we need what system? A respiratory system. So we have to respire and inhale the oxygenated part and we uh, have the deoxygenated part. So the next system is the respiratory system to be formed. And uh, finally, last but not least, uh, which is associated by urogenital system. Euro is a one word, genital is another word. How we previously said cardiovascular. Here also we have Euro and Genital. So what is Euro? Euro means urinary system called as excretory system which includes kidneys, ureters and urinary bladder. So means we intake all fluids and our kidney will filter and finally we will come there it is a thyroid mushroom. So means we have excreted the urine. So urinary system, the kidney is functioning on its own pathways. So all those detailed anatomy and those functions you study during our uh, excretory system that is Europa. Genital part I call them as the reproductive part. So means there are the male genital system and the female genital system. So like you study the parts and details and functions of a male reproductive system and also a female reproductive system we are going to study in all will be considered into an urogenital system. So I have given a little little introductions only. So from the start as we said that we had a general part that is a regional anatomy for regions why we divide. In every region we said that what? Systematically we divided them into systematic anatomy. So as a recall or in a minute we had is skin related with the intercommandary system and then we scroll up about by the bones called as the skeletal system related to muscles is called as what? Muscular system and then with the brain and spinal cord we are going to study the nervous system and then heart and blood vessels, cardiovascular system and then lymph related to it called as lymphatic system, digestive part related organs, digestive system, then kidney related and the reproductive part related male and female as together as urogenital system and related to kidney and all those functions as the excretory system and related to the hormone secretion is an endocrine system. So there are we have 10 level set of uh, systems we are going to have. 
So from the next classes onwards, what we will be doing on, you know, we will start up with the one one system and we will be dealing on and one part is there related to selling that you might have studied in your preschool already. So what is cell, what is prokaryotic cell, what is eukaryotic cell, what is cell division, what is mitosis, meals, it's already you are having a little idea so my view I don't move much into those things. But uh, anyways, we will discuss about that introductory parts also. After knowing these uh, few introductory points, now next step now we are entering into the department of anatomy. So what do you see immediately when you enter into the department of anatomy? Human body. When you see a human body, so we are all living, so we are alive. But when you come there, there we will identify the person who is already no more, he is already dead. So, generally outside the places we call this person was dying dead, so dead body. But when you enter into the medical colleges, now or any paramedical institutions you enter in, you are not supposed to call them as dead bodies. So, we have to call them as cadaver. What is the word? C-A-D-A-V-E-R, cadaver. So, don't forget this word, my dear. So, we have to call them as cadaver. So, now, we will uh, try to see how the cadaver looks in or uh, how, what are all the positions so some introductory terminologies we will study so terminologies means some uh, standard words will be there where it looks like Greek and Latin words I will give you a single word like abduction, adduction so some words will be there all those things we will uh, try to take it on so always in anatomy Indian terminology we talk we talk by anatomical basis, that is anatomical position. So, for example, now I am there. So, let me stand here. So, try to see my feet. So, I am keeping my two feet together. So, I am keeping my two feet together in a letter V shape. Is it clear my feet? So, the two feet are not enclosed. They are in a V shape pattern. And now I am standing straight. And try to see my upper limb. So, when I take my upper limb, I am going to keep my two hands like this. So, means, so this is called as the palm and this is called as the dorsum. So, the palm should face forwards. And also, see me, my eyes, my eyes are looking towards you, means looking straight and forwards. So, can you see my position now? So this position is called as anatomical position. So now let me define my anatomical position statement. So standing upright, looking straight and forwards and the upper limb is hanging by the side and the palms are facing forwards and my two lower limbs are lying means like standing in parallel positions and try to see my toes here toes are towards forward as so this position standing in upright position looking forwards my eyes are looking forwards and my upper limbs are hanging by the side palms are facing forwards legs are placed side by side and the toes are pointing forwards. So this is the living position and the person who is living is standing position. In the same position, if you keep it under a lying posture when the person got died, so automatically what happens? The person is lying on the bed, his eyes are looking upwards, his hands are as usual sides and when I am standing my palms are forwards. But when I am lying my things, arms are facing upwards and the legs will be side by side and the toes also will be pointing upwards. So that is when the person is lying. So means like assume that when we are lying on a bed, we look upwards and the toes are looking up. So means the definition will be changed from living to the dead is why in a living forwards, in a dead upwards. So this is the, I hope you understood the anatomical position. Now, so now we are going to talk about the planes, P L A N E. So the planes are of three varieties. So the first variety of the plane is called as sagittal plane. 
or middle, mid subjugal. What is mid subjugal? Now I am there here. You cut my body into two equal halves. So right half, left half. So for example, uh, you take a paper here. So this is the paper. This paper is a body. And now hold the paper into two equal halves. When I made into two equal halves, so this half is called as what? Right half. What is this one? Left half. So when I divide into two equal halves, right half of the body and left half of the body. So now I am keeping in the middle. So now take a uh, uh, scalpel blade and very many cutters and everything in the lab. Take the body and divide the right half of the body. Left. So this is your right hand. This is your left hand, this is your right leg, this is your left leg. Divide the body into two halves. So dividing into two halves of the body is called as the sagittal or mid-sagittal plane. So you can find this uh, picture now, how we divided the body into two parts. Now we have uh, studied about the sagittal and mid-sagittal plane. So body is divided into two halves. So now again we come into the same position. And now we are dividing the body into upper half and lower half. How will I divide the body into upper half and lower half? This is upper half, this is lower half. So means this part is upper and this part is lower. So now again I fold the paper into two parts. And try to see this is upper half of the paper, lower half of the paper. You divide into two parts. So means, take any instruments, cut my body, upper half, lower half. Don't do barbecue, okay? So upper half and lower half. So with that, the second plane that is called as transverse plane. So transverse and cutting my body from anterior to the posterior in a circular fashion, dividing with upper half and lower half. And the next level of the plane is called as the coronal plane. So in the coronal plane, you could able to identify, now I am standing here now like this. So now slowly now I am divided, so be standing like this. When I am standing like this, we can say that a vertical plane, right angle I am drawing and I am dividing the body into anterior part and posterior part. So now this is called as what? Anterior part. The back side part is called as what? Posterior part. So now we have to take the thin and we have to cut my body into front and back half. You got my point? Front and back half. So now this will becomes anterior, this part will become posterior. So again you cut here, the, this will become anterior and this part will become posterior. So now there are three planes. So when you cut into two halves, it's called as sagittal plane. When you cut transverse, called as transverse plane, upper half and lower half and when you cut into coronal plane right angle to the body so now I divide the anterior part and posterior part is called as a coronal plane so what are the three planes? number one is called as the sagittal plane number two is called as the transverse plane and number three is called as the coronal plane and here you can find the three photographs of different types of cut section of the faces. So now we have learned the different types of uh, cut sections so that is the planes. So now next level, now I would like to bring in the next uh, two set of words so that is called as flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. So what is the definition of flexion? Movement of a body part forward is generally called as flexion. Suppose my hand is there here, my upper limb hand is there. So movement of the body part forwards is called as what? Flexion. So I am doing my action. Flexion. And now, once the body got flexed, again I have to go back to my anatomical position. The movement of the body part backwards is generally termed as extension. I came to my original position. So, this is what? Flexion. This is called extension. 
Moving on to the next uh, two words, we had two important words called as abduction and adduction. The spellings are very important. A B D U C T I O N, and the second spelling is called A D D U C T I O N. D U C T I O N is common abduction, but A B is first, A D is next. So now, what is abduction? Again, I am in the same anatomical position, and we are going to say the definition that movement of the body part away from the midline. So now my hand is there attached to the body. So now I have to move away from the body. So now once I am standing over here in the anatomical position, let me see my hand. So this is the anatomical position. Moving my body part away from the midline. No, no, my hand is bent away. You got my point? So this is called as abduction. Same likewise when I look it into my hand. Now I have done my abduction of my left hand. same like why the second statement so once already the body has done the so what is one abduction the written statement is called as abduction so that is the movement of the body part towards to the midline so now i'm coming back towards to the normal position so now this is called as what abduction so now what is this abduction what is this abduction What is this? Pressure flexion. What is this one? Extension. You can do it for both the right and the left sides of the body. So now I have brought it to you four words of four terminologies: flexion, extension, abduction, adduction. We have studied regarding the flexion, extension, abduction, abduction. In which region we have studied? Hands. So that is the upper limb. Same thing we will looking for the legs also lower. So now when I am there here, so now the first terminal is called what flexor. So let me stand like this. So now God has given an option to flex our hands to the front. Anyone try your legs to front? <laughs> Impossible. So I have to flex your knee. So now I am going to flex my knee. Is it clear? So now this is called as what flexion. And now I am coming back to my original position. So that is called as what uh, extension. So of course I know you will be watching me only, but you have to learn terminology also. Don't forget, okay? And also when I am coming to the front row, so when I am standing here, so how do I do my abduction of my leg? So already we know this is called as what abduction of the hand, abduction of the leg. So now I let me do my abduction again for the lower leg. abduction coming back is called as what adduction let me do the all the actions at a time for the upper limb and the lower limb so let me do the flexion at a time for upper limb and lower limb let me do the extension at a time i hope it is clear next turn now let me do my abduction at a time let me do my adduction at a time So this is the normal terminology where uh, you have to. I am trying all my best to know, incorporate the terminology in your mind. I hope you are understanding it. The next two terminologies are number one is called as the outward rotation. Outward rotation means I can say that as lateral rotation. So what is the definition of a lateral rotation? Lateral rotation is a body part which is rotated outward. How will I rotate my shoulder? For example, these are my two shoulders. Try to observe my shoulders. Now I am in another angle. I am rotating my shoulders backwards. So this is called as lateral rotation. Again, my shoulders are rotating inwards. So this is called as inward rotation or Medial rotation. So I am going to do finally lateral rotation, medial rotation. So almost as we are progressing into a lot of terminology, I know your brain will be a little bit getting up. I can understand you, so, but uh, no other way. So we are proceeding to be in the medical profession. So we will get into the next two terminologies. So that is anterior and posterior. So already when previously when we are drawing the plane, you know, right half, left half, upper, lower. 
and when I was standing, I told you that we have to draw a, a plane, coronal plane, which is in towards anterior and anterior part and posterior part. So now we are saying that anterior, what's the definition? It is towards the front of the body. So when we draw the coronal plane, this whole part of the body is called as anterior and the whole back is called as the posterior. So remember the two terminologies anterior and posterior and the next uh, I am trying to take to the next two terminologies that is called as medial and lateral. So now I am here whether it is anterior or posterior or whatever it might be. You take a hand whatever it might be. First let me bring into you two important words called as medial and lateral. So what is the definition of medial which is closer to the midline. So now I am standing in the anatomical position. So now my upper limb is close towards to the midline. So means this part of the body is medial, this half. And what is the other statement? Lateral. Lateral means away from the midline is called as lateral. Suppose now we are taking further the hand. So now this part is medial. Away, this part is called as what? Lateral. Same when my having my thorax or abdomen. So now when my body is so the midline part is called as what a medial. So this part is the medial and away from the midline. So this part is called as what a lateral. So medial part and lateral part. So these are the two important words to be remembered. And moving on to the next two terminologies so that is called as the by transverse plane we divide our body into upper part and lower part. Suppose for example when you are going to take two words called as superior and inferior. Suppose now I am standing. So superior means what? The first rank of the class. Inferior means what? You are the last rank of the class. Means the one who is on the top. So when I am touching my fingers on my head, so this is my superior. So automatically, when I am going to touch my foot or the sole, so that is called as what? Inferior. So means two extreme positions, superior and lower down is called as what? Inferior. Suppose if I want to take my total upper limb. So this is superior, this is inferior. Two extreme ends which should be on the top and which should be on the down are the two words of superior and inferior. Next, I would like to take to the next to two terminologies, which looks uh, too similar like superior and inferior only. Those two words are called as proximal and distal. So, what is proximal? Nearer to the trunk is called as proximal. Away from the trunk is called as distal. So, what is trunk? So now this is my trunk, my thoracic level. This trunk is attached by what? Upper limb. So now the part which is attached to the trunk is called as proximal. Either this is attached to the trunk? <coughs> no. So means which is not attached away from the trunk is called as distal. Generally we said that superior inferior. But the one which is superior is attached to the trunk is called as what? proximal and this is called as what? Distal. Same as I am going to take my legs. So now my legs are attached to my hip level. So this part of the lower limb, this is called as what? Proximal. To the toes where I am going to reach the ending part which is not attached to the trunk is called as what? Distal. So don't confuse with the superior. What is this one? No one is above my top. So then this is what? Superior. And no one is behind, more than that one, that is more than the toes. So that is called as what? Inferior. Same way as the one which are attached to the trunks is called as what? Proximal and now this one is called as what? Distal. Other terminologies are, for example, you are going to take some organs. For example, you take a heart again. So, Heart is externally part and inside we are going to have you might study chambers, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. So there are chambers are So all these type of organs we are going to classify under as what solid organs. 
So the one some structures which are covering outside the heart will be superficial and there are certain structures which are lying deep inside. So they are called as deep. For example, you take blood vessel. So blood vessel is rounded. For example, this is the tunnel. So like any water tube also you take. So the one which is outermost covering is called as what? We call them as the uh, external part and the inner lining is called as water, internal part. So some books will written as exterior and interior. So previously also I was saying one statement related to superficial and deep. So there are some organs are there in the abdomen. First when I open the skin you know I have some fat layers are there. Then I had some intestines are there. Those are all superficially located. I have to take it out. Deep inside some other organs are there. Those organs like example kidneys, then uh, ureters, bladder. So certain organs are superficial, certain organs are deep inside. And for the hollow organs, outermost is called as what? Exterior. The inside one is called as what? Interior. Then clinical words, there are two terminologies are there. Ipsilateral and contralateral. Ipsi, Ipsi means I T S side. Ipsi means same side. So now I am here. So now I have the paralysis. My limb is not working. So on my same side, my limb got affected. Where my same side of my body got affected. Same side, the limb is affected. This is called as what? Ipsilateral. This side is there, the functioning part, but the opposite side I had a paralysis. So opposite word. So opposite is called as contra. So contral angle. Same side is called as ipsilateral. The opposite side is called as an contralateral. So moving on to the next terminology. So as just now we have said uh, two words called as who is uh, superior and uh, who is the inferior? So there are other two terms I can say that the superior part, this is superior means what I can call, this is called what head. So the head means I can call them as cephalic. Cephalic is called as head and the one which is lower or inferior, though I can call them as caudal. So cephalic is superior, caudal is inferior. Next uh, terminologies. So, like we come by limb wise pattern. So, upper limb terminology is and lower limb terminology. So, now I take the upper limb. So now, to, because still we didn't start its skeletal system, so it might be little bit difficult, I feel, but I try my best to incorporate the knowledge of uh, medical terms into your brain. So, don't be in a hurry mode or uh, don't be in a uh, when this class will be over. It will be over soon, don't worry. So now to understand that, so now when I take the upper limb, as we said that this is attached to the trunk. So I can call them as what? Proxima. And this is called as what? Distal. So when I am going to take the two parts, so this part is called as what? Flexion. So this part is called as what? Arm. This is called as what? Forearm. So now to understand, so this is called as a proximal. This is called as a distal. Same likewise, here this part in the arm, I can call this is the medial side, this is called as what? Lateral side. Indirect revision is also happening. This is also medial side, this is also lateral. Same of which are medial and lateral. Now I am going to change the terminologies in the forearm. So the one which is the medial side, the one which is on the lateral side. So here, what type of bone which is made up of? The arm bone is made up of humerus. The arm bone is made up of humerus. Same likewise, when you take the forearm, the lateral side is made up of a radius bone and the medial side is made up of ulna bone. I repeat it, radius, R-A-D-I-U-S and the medial side is called as what? Ulna, U-L-N-E. So, Instead of lateral part of the forearm, I can call it as what? Radial side, the name of the bone. Instead of calling the medial side, I can call them as what? Alnar side. So now uh, some few funny guys will come outside from the class. So now this is called as humorous. So I want this is humorous side. This is also humorous side. Don't try to tell them two times. 
So I have I don't have another home as it is a single home. So I call them a medium side and that. But here I have two different bones are there. So radius, so radial side on lateral part. Medial side I am going to have ulna, so I can call them as ulna. Same terminology if I come on to the lower limb. So now I am going to take my leg. So now here it is made up of a bone called as femur. F E M U R femur. So now, when you are going to see the leg, so now this is my medial side and this is my lateral side. Here I can call medial, here I can call lateral because it is only one bone femur. But here in the leg, the medial side is made up of T B R bone, T I B I A. The lateral side, the bone is made up of fibula, F I B U L A. So TBR fibula, so we call it radius, ulna. Radius is on which side? Lateral side, ulna is on which side? Medial side. Here the TBR is on medial side, I can call them as medial side is called as TBL side. The lateral side I have fibula, I can call them as what? Fibular side you have to be remember. So again I will bring in two terminologies back again. So when you are going to take the hand, so now this is our hand. So now I am going to say that, so now we already know when we are standing in anatomical position, this is our anterior side. So the anterior side of the hand, this is called as the palmar surface. What is the name? Palmar surface. So now I am rotating my hands back side. So this side and this side is posterior surface, I can call them as dorsum of hand. So what is this one? Palmar surface. What is this one? Dorsal surface. And then moving on to the next terminologies, we need to understand a very important point when I am going to take how we call as palmar and dorsal side for the hand. Same like is when I am going to take the leg. So when you see the leg at this level, so now on the top side is called as superior surface. Superior surface is called as, so this is our superior surface. So this is called as dorsum of foot. This is called as interior surface, where I am touching with my hand. So this part is called as plantar surface. So I am keeping my plantar surface on the floor. So the one which is touching the ground is called as the plantar surface. The one which is on the top is called as what? Superior surface. So what are the two terminologies? Dorsum of the foot and the one which is touching the floor is called as the plantar surface. So now I am rotating my hand in a circular fashion, 360 degree motion. I can do it like this. Even I can do it like this. So this movement is called as circumduction. It is called as what? Circumduction. And then next I would like to bring you to the next terminologies. So the next terminologies will be the, as we already know, abduction and adduction we have studied. Again moving on to the next uh, important two terminologies here. We had medial rotation and uh, lateral rotation. So now I am standing in my endomical position. So now I am bringing, so this is flexion, extension, abduction, adduction we know. So now from the anatomical position, I am bringing my hand like this. So I will take the statement now. Medial rotation means moving part which is rotated inwards to the midline. So I am rotating inwards to the midline. So this is called as what? Medial rotation. Same likewise, in the same position, I go back to my original position. Called as lateral rotation, so that is moving part which is going to be rotated outside or externally or away from the midline is called as what? Lateral rotation. So for a funny incident I went to one country and suddenly they invited me. Good evening sir. <laughs> so I thought that oh, it is very nice of style I thought but I now I understand that they know some anatomy So now this is called as medial rotation and now this is called as a lateral rotation. Moving on to the next uh, terminologies. So to understand previously when I was taking flexion and extension for upper limb, 
even for the normal thing what I told you. So now this is called as what? Flexion of the leg and this is called as what? Extension of the leg. I have only covered during the upper limb itself. So now when we are in the uh, lower limb, so there are two things we have to study. So that is, so try to see the toes. Try to see the toes once. So generally when you see upper limb, this is called as what? Abduction, moving leg. Coming back is called as what? Adduction. So now, I would like to lift my leg now. Try to see my toes, fingers. Can you see my toes clearly? So now, all toes are attached together. So now, I am taking away from, you see my first toe. I have divided into two parts. So one which is like, that is called as what? Abduction of the toe. Again, I am coming back to Adduction of the toe. So, moving away, abduction. Coming back, adduction. Same I can show it even in the fingers also. Try to take my fingers. Okay. So, now this is my middle finger. So, take my, this is also as my middle finger. Five fingers are there. So, now I take my thumb. So, can you see my thumb? So, now I am doing my thumb. Abduction. Got it? And again I am coming back. What is this one? Adduction. Abduction. Adduction. We are doing all the actions at a time. So now this is called as moving away from the body. Abduction. Adduction. Flexion. Extension. So these are the terms the same thing. Even you do it even for your leg also. In continuation with the new terminologies, so there are two more terminologies that are there in the upper limb. So that is called as pronation and supination. So let me read the definition of the uh, pronation first so that you will understand the action. So now here the forearm, so now this is our forearm. The forearm is rotated, so this is called as water rotation, rotation that the palm is facing to the ground. So now I am standing in my hand position. Take my limb, take my hand and rotate it posterior. So now, when I am in hand is there like this. Rotate it posteriorly so that the palm is facing in a posteriorly towards to the ground. So this is called as a pronation. Once the pronation was done, again I have to come back to normal position called as supination. The definition of the supination is like the forearm is going to be rotated. So now I am rotating the palm and the palm is now facing above. The palm is facing? Yeah. So this is called as water. Supination. So now I am standing in my anatomical position. So indirectly they are in what? Supine position. So now I am doing my pronation, palm facing downwards, palm facing upwards for the forearm is called as supination. Now there are few terminals even in the lower limb. So already we know that the dorsum of the foot and the lower down is called as what? Plantar surface of the foot. So now what does these actions are? So I am taking my foot, so if you could able to observe my foot clearly. So I am doing my foot, bringing it upwards. I am bringing it upwards. So that is called as dorsiflexion. So what is dorsiflexion? So dorsiflexion is a movement of foot in which the dorsal surface of the foot is coming towards to the front. So now I am bringing it towards to the front. So now I have made my dorsiflexion. So now the next statement is called, as I am moving towards the opposite side, plantar flexion. So now this is what dorsiflexion. Plantar flexion is a movement of which the dorsal surface of the foot is moving away from the leg. From the leg now I am going this side. So this is called as what? The plantar flexion. So I repeat it. This is what? Dorsiflexion. This is what? Plantar And next two more terms. Inversion and eversion. What is inversion? So now for example, you are this is medial side, this is lateral. For the foot also, this is my medial and this is my lateral. 
So now the statement says for the inversion is the sole of the foot should face medially. So now I am going to make that this is the sole which is going to touch medium. So totally it was touching medium. Can you see? It is touching medium. Can you see the foot clearly? So that part of pattern is called as what? Inversion. Once the foot got inverted, the sole of the foot is now going to face lateral. So other side is called as what? Inversion. So inversion, inversion. So four words we have learned. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, inversion. Now moving on to the terminologies which are related in the neck region. In the neck region, I will try to bring into you few terminologies. In the first one is called as same like that we started in upper limb and lower limb flexion and extension. So let me stand me like this. So now I am trying to bring my neck flexion. Neck flexion. I came back normal. That is called as neck extension. I repeat it. Neck flexion, neck extension. Neck flexion. Neck extension. So the next level we are going to go to the next word. So I am going to rotate my neck. So now I am standing straight, looking straight. I am rotating my neck towards my right side. Try to see me. This is my right side neck rotation. Coming to the normal. Left side neck rotation. So this is my left side neck rotation coming to the norm. And the next two terminologies are flexion is also two types right lateral flexion and left lateral flexion. So now I am standing straight, I am bending my neck to my right side, right lateral flexion coming to the normal, left lateral flexion coming to the norm. So on and thus again I will try to show all the actions now. This is neck flexion, neck extension, right rotation, left rotation, right lateral flexion, left lateral flexion. So now this whole body is called as a trunk. The whole body is also going to flex, so not only neck or not only the limbs or not the fingers or the toes, even my body also is going to do flexion. Try to see me. So this is flexion and again I am coming back to the normal position is the extension of the trunk. So now I am going to keep my two hands at my hip level. So now I am going to do the right rotation, normal left rotation normal so I repeat it flexion of the trunk extension of the trunk right rotation left rotation and moving on to the next terminologist we have is the previously I told you that the neck is going to do lateral flexion this is called what neck side right flexion so now I am going to do what? Total flexion of my body of the right. So this is called as what? Right lateral flexion. And same for the neck I have done left side flexion. Same likewise we have to do now for the left side of the body. So whole body left lateral flexion. So I am going to do all of the trunk. These are all are related to trunk action. I hope uh, you understand. All my students, uh, I hope that uh, I made my best of satisfaction to make you understand the terminologies. So my part is done and uh, soon of the class I will send the presentation also. But also from your end also you have to study. And please make sure that uh, any doubts are there or any inconvenience are there. Please get back to me, nothing to worry about uh, myself and yourself. So I have a good healthy communication between my teachers and relationship. And, uh, any doubts, please don't hesitate. Do call us, uh, do text me. I am here always to guide you related to anatomy part. And also, this is our first lecture. 
I wish you the best of luck and may God bless you all abundantly and uh, we welcome you all to these uh, medical institutions and uh, utilize the time, uh, teacher teaching and the lab timings and also the uh, further uh, gathering of materials, attending examinations and uh, make sure that I wish you all to see you all in a greater heights. So, with that for uh, today's uh, the initial lecture of uh, Terminology and introduction to anatomy is uh, over. I'd like to see you all in the next lecture. Until then, take care. Thank you.